live from the local station. News 4 Jax starts now. A concerning crack in the tropics. This system has poured a right in its crosshairs and it's projected to reach the state by this weekend. So it is time to prepare now. Chief Meteorologist John Gaughan is tracking this development tonight. And John, what's the latest from the Hurricane Center? Well, once again, the details are a little loose because the system is so, well, loose. It's unorganized. It's moving way too fast, moving into the west around 25 miles an hour. It used to be a rule that I had many years ago that if a storm system in that particular place of the world was moving more than 22 miles an hour, it tended to break up. But this is a very large system, and because of that, it probably will not. It's just now east of the Lesser Antilles. It's going to go right over, like looks like Guadalupe, Martinique, and then head on off here towards Puerto Rico. Now, this is the part of the track where it gets curious because if it goes directly over Puerto Rico, and that's not the forecast, but remember the cone, but if it goes over the islands here, and not just that one, but the Hispaniola as well, then it could weaken considerably. And that's basically the track that the National Hurricane Center is at least suggesting at this point. Remember, when the narrow part of the cone of uncertainty is like this two or three days out, they're highly certain that this will be the ultimate track basically right over the island. And if that happens, it should, with our fingers crossed and prayers going on, weaken considerably or just stay weak. That's the important part. We want it to remain weak. Problem is, Thursday night, Friday night, we start to slow the system down, and that gives it some time to regenerate. So the Hurricane Center thinks that this will be just below hurricane strength by the time it reaches out there towards South Florida. That would take place sometime on Saturday evening. And what happens thereafter? Well, it kind of drifts up the coast, weakening as it does so. And if it does that, we still could potentially see an impact here with some very heavy rains. Something we'll kind of focus on, at least for now, and keep the prayers going that this thing does not generate itself more than what we're tracking as it is now. A very broad system. Joy? All righty, John, thanks. The weather impacted all parts of Duval County earlier this evening. Here's a video of slick roads from our DOT cam on I-10 at Lenox Avenue. Take a look. There were delays after this semi-truck was involved in an accident, ripping off its front end. No word yet on what caused the accident or if anyone was hurt. There were also road problems in Talleyrand. Our photographers captured this video after most of the heavy rain passed through, causing big flooding problems. Some drivers tried fighting through, or they just drove around the flooded streets that were submerged in water. And let's take a look at the north side. Rain causing visibility issues on the road. This was just before 6 p.m. when it was really coming down. Drivers had to use extra caution and slow down because it was hard to see in some areas with that rain. You know, tonight's storms also led to a fire in St. Johns County. The family believing lightning caused uh, their flames in their Fruit Cove home. News for Jack's reporter Corley Peel joining us live outside the home with why the family believes lightning was the source of the flames. Corley? The family tells me they were sitting inside their home when they heard a loud bang, then saw smoke coming from the roof. And we actually have seen crews out here. They just patched up a hole in the roof there. You can see that patching. That's where firefighters cut their way in to put out the fire earlier this afternoon. You can also see a U-Haul truck is in the family's driveway, but inside the home is where majority of the destruction happened. Large pieces of insulation cover the Brunner's home in Fruit Cove, but their antiques and family photos are untouched after they say lightning struck their home on Tuesday. It was loud. John Brunner says he and his wife were watching TV when he believes lightning struck this part of his roof. After a while, it was starting to smoke, all right? And uh, I went outside and, and cut the uh, breakers off. All right? My wife was yelling, all right, that the, the, the house was on fire, the house was on fire. Firefighters rushed to the home to put out the fire that they say was mainly in the attic. The damage shows a large hole in the living room ceiling. Another hole is seen in the entryway ceiling. Tuesday's strong storms caused raging floods on the west side of Mandarin, backing up traffic. Brunner says it will take some time to repair the damage, and he says he'll have to change his morning routine. I was supposed to be playing tennis in the morning. So just let the guys know I probably won't be there. Brunner is thankful he, his wife, and their two dogs made it out safe. Brunner says that they plan to stay with family tonight. 
The St. Johns County firefighters say that they cannot confirm if the fire was caused by a lightning strike, but they said that the fire marshal is investigating. Reporting live from Fruit Cove, Corley Peel Channel 4, the local station. And stay ahead of storms with FutureCast on the Weather Authority app. You select live radar and click FutureCast layer and find out if the rain is going where you are. Search WJXT for the free app. It's in your Apple or your Android app store. Taking a look now at the coronavirus numbers in Northeast Florida, the Department of Health has announced 191 new deaths, the most Florida has reported in a single day. Eight of those deaths were in our region. There were three in Duval County, two in Flagler County, two in Putnam County, and one in St. John's County. Overall, 289 people have been killed by the virus in Northeast Florida. With each passing day, the number of positive coronavirus cases continues to surge in many parts of the U.S., including Northeast Florida. But now, preclinical research into a specific molecule has led to a breakthrough in how we may later fight COVID-19, especially if this new finding can be used in a vaccine. News for Jack's reporter Eric Gavigny joins us live to explain this molecule NAD. Eric? Yes, Joy, NAD is a molecule we all have in our bodies. In fact, it helps convert the food we eat into energy. Now, a doctor at a research lab in California recently discovered that NAD may be the key to preventing COVID-19 from replicating itself once we come in contact with the virus. We're working on something called... Dr. Charles Brenner is currently researching ways to create what's called innate immunity from COVID-19, meaning physical, chemical, and cellular defense that kicks in the moment a person is exposed to the virus. He recently discovered that when cells from lab mice were exposed to COVID-19, the cells were depleted of a metabolizing molecule called NAD, which helps convert consumed food into energy. NAD is also found in humans. What we are discovering is that by boosting NAD, you can potentially increase the antiviral defense and boost the innate immunity against coronaviruses. Dr. Brenner says a potential NAD booster that would fight COVID-19 could someday be a prescription drug or vitamin, but cautions that ideal remedy because research has only been focused on cells. But it's progressing to animal and, and human clinical trials, and it's something that potentially has the ability to help prevent infection, as well as potentially uh, lower the symptomology of people that are unfortunately infected with the COVID-19 uh, virus. And although people are already taking over-the-counter NAG boosters called Niagen, which has been touted as a supplement to support metabolism and increase energy. There are not clinical data yet showing that Niagen will allow people to resist infection, but that's the type of research that is underway right now in order to test that hypothesis. Now, Dr. Brenner says if a COVID-19 vaccine is finally approved and his research leads to a uh, NAG booster to combat COVID-19, he says the two combined would be like a superpower against the coronavirus. Reporting live, Eric Avignet, Channel 4, The Local Station. Trouble is brewing in South Florida. The mayor of Miami is threatening legal action against Miami-Dade County. Francis Suarez says Miami-Dade owes him money from the federal government that was supposed to help with the pandemic. We as a city of Miami are exploring the possibility of legal action against Miami-Dade County for bad faith negotiations and for taking the money away from our citizens that should have gone to our citizens based on the CARES Act funding. Our citizens were entitled to receive, based on population, $81 million in federal help. The current county proposal on a reimbursement basis would get our citizens potentially as little as $8 million, which is 10% of what uh, we should get based on population. Miami-Dade Mayor Carlos Jimenez has not responded to the accusations. The head of the World Health Organization says the coronavirus pandemic is the most severe public health emergency it has ever faced. And he warned it isn't going away anytime soon. It's easily the most severe. Almost 16 million cases have now been reported to WHO. 
and more than 640,000 deaths. And the pandemic continues to accelerate. In the past six weeks, the total number of cases has roughly doubled. The director general says he will meet with his emergency committee later this week to reevaluate the pandemic. In a consumer alert tonight, the FDA now says nearly 90 hand sanitizer brands have been found to contain the toxic chemical methanol. As News for Jack consumer investigator Lauren Verno explains, these brands are popping up in big name stores. The next time you go to buy hand sanitizer, make sure to check the label. Not the ingredients, though, where it comes from. Scroll down the list of 87 hand sanitizer the FDA warns contains methanol, and you'll notice an overwhelming trend. I would look and say, if, you know, it's uh, manufactured in Mexico, I toss it out. Out of the 87 brands listed on the site, all but one of them are from Mexico. The only other product found to contain methanol is out of Tennessee. And Dr. Anthony DeGalorme with Florida Poison Control Center says these brands are on local shelves. Yeah, and people are buying these off the shelves at big name stores, right? Yep, I mean, Target, Walmart, Costco, um, you know, here's one of the products that was, uh, it's uh, Bloomin, and we, you know, we had this product pop up about a month ago, and this is one of the first ones that we saw that was contaminated, and this person, I think, bought that from Target. We visited both a Target and Walmart and did not find any products on the FDA's list. But because it's hard to find big name brands available inside stores right now, Dr. Degalorm warns that these potentially deadly products are going to keep popping up. Uh, unfortunately, the manufacturing processes in places like Mexico aren't as uh, stringent as you know, the United States products. Florida Poison Control Center already getting reports of methanol exposure. Uh, we haven't had any serious one, but we have had a couple where children were hospitalized. They did need, you know, some intense treatment because they had gone into into bottles of hand sanitizer that had the methanol in it. And because all of the products found to contain methanol did not list methanol as an ingredient on the bottles, Dr. Degalorm says that's why it's so important to check where these products were made. And if you're still unsure whether your hand sanitizer is on the list, we have a complete breakdown on our website, newsforjacks.com. I'm Lauren Verno, Channel 4, the local station. Covering Clay County, where crews are trying to put out a brush fire. It's in the area of Lost Acre Road in Green Cove Springs. Firefighters say it's burned about five acres in a marshy, isolated area and that no buildings are being threatened. Florida Forest Service members are helping get it under control. A live look for you now outside from our South Bank Sky Cam. It was a day of wet weather and slick roads in Duval. Yeah, after the break, John Gunn will join us and tell us whether more rain is ahead.